A while ago I made a video on DPP Little Cup, the fastest metagame ever, uh, a favorite of mine, and you can check that out if you like, it's in the pinned comment. And around the time of that video I started reaching out to some DPP Little Cup players because I wanted to see if there was interest in an invitational tournament, and there was. Uh, but I bit off more than I could chew because I was definitely not in the kind of uh, headspace slash free time position to be hosting that kind of thing. So, uh, fortunately, Phantos13 and Essek have... I'm pronouncing their names uh, terribly, I apologize. They hosted the tournament uh, in my stead and they have even offered a cash prize. How wonderful is that? So, I had some grand ideas about a live tournament that everyone would show up and we would just, you know, do the whole thing in a couple hours and uh, I would get it all live. And one day, I'd, I'd still like that, but obviously coordinating all the different time zones and schedules is a complete nightmare. Uh, so, the, uh, and I also wanted to do this more standard, you know, week by week uh, double elimination tournament. So, uh, yes, that is what uh, Phantos and Essek have put together. I'm reading it right now. A 24-player double elimination tournament. So, loser's bracket, you're still alive, all that. And they put together a cash prize. And that is basically it. So, I have not seen these games. And I just want to see some DPP Little Cup goodness. I am not familiar with the player base. I remember mostly very old players. Um, slash maybe some more modern Little Cup players, modern by my standards, still being old for most people because I'm a dinosaur, uh, who have started playing DPP as well. And uh, I haven't kept up with the metagame in a very long time, so I'm excited for this opportunity to just watch the game without, you know, over-analyzing it like my instinct is with every lead matchup in DPP Ubers. I'm sure I won't be able to help myself though. So, let's jump into Evito versus Kipklauf. Yeah, uh, I, I was trying to gauge what kind of language that was coming from. I was like, is that Dutch? Uh, let me remember my Dutch pronunciation rules. But, uh, yeah, sorry. Kip. We're gonna go with Kip versus Evito. Voltorb lead. Now, I don't know what Voltorb lead does. I assume it could... I mean, Rain Dance is the obvious if we're just gonna make it out to be a mini Electrode. But I assume with its great speed, you know, an explosion, then it's not a bad lead either. And Mankey lead, I assume, is just gonna be Scarf. And Voltorb switches out of it, and indeed, there's a close combat as Ghastly comes in. What's the Ghastly answer gonna be? Bronzor. Okay, not a Stunky. And a nice double to Voltorb. Does this taunt? Yeah, it does. Uh, oh my god. I just freaked out because I heard... Uh, yeah, it, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but um, it's about to be noon on Wednesday. And that is when uh, the sirens are tested uh, here in Prague. So... Yeah, now they just said it in Czech, and now they're saying it in English. So I had a heart attack before realizing what time it was. Oh, that means I have to sign up for basketball in a few minutes, too. Yeah, Wednesday at noon is uh, very eventful. <laughs> and then after this, I have to go to the gym, and then I have to meet up with my lady for lunch, and then I gotta go to work. Oh my god, it's just such a full day. Which is why I'm glad that I can get through, hopefully, all of round one of this tournament, because I uh, because DPP Little Cup is such a fast-paced uh, tier, that, yeah, and my lack of knowledge should theoretically be keeping me from overanalyzing it, but if I keep pausing the game on every turn, then that's not going to happen, Kev. You have a limited window here. So, uh, yeah, that means uh, there's going to be a siren test in a few seconds, and please do not freak out. Uh, if you can hear it. I don't even know if you can. So, uh, getting back to... Bronzor just going for EQ, not letting itself be taunted and taking a free hit. So, Orenberry, uh, so not Sash. Not going to be uh, staying in on Mankey for that reason then. And uh, going now, oh, I guess really being careful about that Bronzor health as Evito is willing to let Mankey take a huge hit in order to, you know, chase out the 
the Voltorb again. This time he's going to pop a U-turn on the Ghastly, and this time Gligar comes in maybe to avoid a pursuit from like Houndour or something. Gligar U-turns, and uh, the U-turn for from the Mankey gets Bronzor in for rocks. That's big. Now in comes big hitter Munchlax trying to pursue the Bronzor, uh, afraid of Fire Punch. But he's just going to stand and get damage. I mean, not a bad trade. Remember Bronzor... Oh, okay. I was going to say, uh, does Munchlax have immunity like Snorlax? But no, it's uh, Thick Fat. It doesn't even ha uh, have the opportunity to learn immunity. Then I was like, yeah, I also don't think Bronzor learns Toxic in Little Cup. Because, you know, yeah, as much as we want to just make the Little Cup Pokemon out to be mini versions of... Uh, their OU counterparts. They're very different. Like, Bronzor likes to run Recycle with an Orin Berry, so it perpetually it gets Orin Berries over and over. It's basically a recover. And, uh, yeah, that's a dynamic Bronzong is not going to be replicating. And the fast pace means Toxic? Uh, not really. So in comes the own Munchlax to try and duel it, uh, trying to hit the Fire Punch, which would be resisted, or take the Fire Punch, which would be resisted because of Thick Fat. But now Munchlax uh, has eaten the return, and it's gotten the Orin Berry burnt. So even though they're at roughly the same health, uh, Kip is definitely ahead. And now you might not want to stay in not just to trade uh, returns to maintain the advantage, but also because Munchlax, from what I have observed, my like one metagame observ, my, my, I've made a few metagame observations while keeping up with DPP LC for uh, false swipe writing. You know, I've been watching recent replays, and I've learned that uh, Rain has become a real thing, which was definitely not the case when I played it. Uh, you know, and I was delighted to see Weasel, my beloved, uh, succeeding. And Munchlax has started running Superpower, which is also a, uh, a newer development. So, oh, or Self-Destruct. Now that one I didn't know about. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, I guess the idea is that Munchlax is so valuable that you don't want to blow it up necessarily. But, I mean, you blow up your Snorlax in GSC, so... Uh, definitely has some merit, and this one gets caught by Ghastly for nothing. In comes Bronzor, Munchlax gonna come in and absorb a Psychic? No, rather than Psychic and push Munchlax, yeah, there's my alarm telling me the, the basketball signups are up. Uh, which means the Sirens are gonna start momentarily, I apologize. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so... That was a great move. Rather than Psychic and just trip uh, Munchlax's Orinberry and bring it back to full health, Evito is going to go to Apom. I love seeing Apom. Uh, it's not you sometimes see it as a lead. I mean, rarely, but uh, mid game Apom is something else. I mean, that speed stat fake out. It's hard uh, and fake out tripping the Orinberry is much better than Psychic, of course, because fake out is much stronger. So now he's going to U-turn and then go to Bronzor. Oh, it might not even have U-turn if it doesn't have it. If it doesn't use it, because you don't really worry about Life Orb Recoil uh, in Little Cup. Especially not a frail Pokemon like uh, Apom. So now Bronzor's Orenberry gets tripped. There is the Super Power. And there's the Recycle for the Orenberry. So Evito definitely... Yep. There go the Sirens. I'm so sorry. But I promise, wherever you are, it is totally, totally safe. I hope it's safe, anyway. But yeah, uh, you have my assurance that the sounds you are probably hearing in the background, I hope you don't hear them very well, uh, are not of any alarm. Yeah. <laughs> you never get used to this. Uh, and I will take this opportunity to sign up for basketball. If you don't sign up in those first couple minutes, you will not make it in. Alright, I am in. Great. So, uh, Bronzor has indeed... This lends a level of uh, drama to this round one matchup. I wish this happened during the finals. That would be really intense. Maybe for the finals I'll add like a siren sound effect or something. Really go all out. Anyway, so Bronzor definitely comes out on top of that interaction because uh, the Munchlax is now weakened and Bronzor wound up the turn, wound up with a 6% more health than it started the turn with. So now Munchlax is going to get out of there because minus one EQ is going to scare it out. Do you go for Psychic? No, Recycle. Um... Oh, that's a nice move, because Recycle works like that even if you don't eat the berry, because it had just eaten the berry on the next turn. So now this means, that was a great move, you know, scouting the switch by Evito, because when you have the, uh, because when you're going to scout the switch, okay, I guess it doesn't have Psychic? But no, Bronzor switched into Ghastly, but then again, I guess he wasn't expecting a Ghastly to switch into Bronzor by that rationale, you know? So it was just, whatever the switch is, I'm going to Recycle. 
And now he has the Orin Berry to switch in again later. So that's a nice move. So now he's going to go to Tentacool. I gotta admit, I've never seen a Tentacool in Little Cup before. Excuse me. I don't know what it's going to do. But, uh... It's going to chase that Ghastly out, and it absorbs a will o -Wisp pretty nicely. Note the lower uh, burn damage that uh, is taken in Little Cup by virtue of the lower HP stats. You know, 8% burn. That's, you know, still more than RBY and Gen 7 through 9, but still, uh, <laughs> it's nice seeing such uh, such lower percent. Although it went down to 92 and then 83, so I have to admit I don't know the exact percentage that it's doing, because that's not consistent. First it takes 8, then it takes 9, so... Anyway, the sirens are winding down now, thank goodness, as Tentacruel has laid down T- Tentacool has laid down T-Spikes. I have to admit, I've never seen T-Spikes in uh, DPP Little Cup, so I don't know if that's a metagame development or not. So, uh, the, you, the viewer, are in the, the passenger seat with me as we are observing together. Isn't that wonderful? So, yeah, I'm your guide insofar as I, I used to do this. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so T-Spikes, which are going to be picked up by Stunky, but... Uh, later, anyway, but you know something else might step on them before, and I, I can see the merit of T spikes. I mean, anything to slow down Munchlax. So Gligar comes into God. That does a lot. That crunch. Uh, I don't know. If that means it's boosted or just my head calc is off. But that crunch really, really stung. I mean, I know it's little cup and everything, but Gligar is pretty bulky, all things considered. So there's an Aqua Tail, and that really. Oh, that's a banded Gligar for sure, as it slams uh, Kip's Gligar. And in comes Tentacool to absorb the opposing uh, Aqua Tail, maybe fearing Scarf. So, I've never seen a banned Gligar before, but Scarf is, you know, one of the most popular sets. Gligar does a million things. So, he is not able to trip up anything. I've been using the word trip a lot today, I don't know why. Uh, so, Stunky does pick up the T-Spikes without making Munchlax or Voltorb or whatever step on it. But, it also does so at the cost of a Surf. Now, there's Tentacruel, Burn get, knocking it down into Orin range and getting back up to full health, so it's out of uh, range for Sucker Punch. So that's definitely not a banded Stunky, I don't think. That would have done a lot more to Tentacruel, unless it's like physically defensive or something. But Ghastly's going to come in, Revenge with Shadow Ball, as Tentacruel put a lot of work in taking down Stunky. The, but if we're looking at the game state, I, it, a lot is really coming down to the last on Kip's end, because... I mean, Bronzor is doing well defensively, but it feels like Kip is going to be able to outlast the Assault. As long as... I mean, it, a lot depends on the last. But with Ghastly around for the CC... I mean, this could pursue. Never mind. Oh, Apom doesn't have a Technician. How silly of me. I, I could have sworn it had Technician. Uh, in, maybe that's in later gens, when it has, like, Tail Slap. But, I mean, Stab Fake Out is still strong. But there's Pursuit, and down goes Ghastly. So with Gligar low and Ghastly low, then, okay, now Scarf Mankey uh, close combat is looking a lot scarier, especially because Gligar goes down to rocks. So there we see a, a unique DPP mechanic where uh, you don't, if you get KO'd by Pursuit as you switch, you don't get to choose and you switch. They ch uh, change that in Gen 5. But if you, as you see there, if you switch to Gligar, you know, and then you get Pursuited, you still uh, switch to Gligar. So there you have that two KO in one turn mechanic, which is so fun. So, uh, Apom gets a lot of value there, and in comes Voltorb. That Thunderbolt really stung. I'm starting to see the appeal. Uh, and now he's going to taunt after tripping the Orinberry. <laughs> tripping. Uh, after activating the Orinberry and taunting, and Zigzagoon. Oh, okay. Belly Drum Zigzagoon. Now, Zigzagoon is not going to stop Mankey's close combat, obviously, but E Speed will pick it off. So it's a matter of going for broke with, with Ziggy. So, Belly Drum, Orinberry, what set, what moves does he even learn besides, uh, well, Psychic, it looks like a, it could be a two-hit KO. So, there's E-Speed, and there's Psychic, and it's a two-hit KO. So, never mind, looks like this game's going to E-Veto. And, indeed, it does. Game two. Snover, ooh, there we go. And another Voltorb, okay. And it just blows up right away, and goodbye Snover. Alright. Yeah, I see uh, the speed on Voltorb is really impressive, because if it's 20 speed max, then it outruns even Scarf Snover. And uh, so, Sash was not seen there. Aw, Skitty. Okay, so, sadly no Waylord around, haha. Uh, <laughs> but, I don't know what Skitty does, to be frank. I... 
br- barely know what Del Caddy does because I remembered one guy. Oh, that's what it does. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. That's really cool. I was going to say, there was a guy, uh, Dangerous36M, a.k.a. Rick, who used uh, Del Caddy in a standard Wi-Fi battle back in 2009. Uh, and he was always using crazy stuff. That's the one time I've ever used Del Caddy, ever seen Del Caddy used competitively. I don't even remember what it did. It was like Thunder Wave and weird stuff. Especially defensive, I think. But yeah, so Skitty just used Explosion. That alone has made this video worth it. Let's see that again. <laughs> yeah, boom. And look at how strong that is, too. It O-code Bronze Ore. I know it's Little Cup and everything, but... Cleaving through a resist like that, that's just beautiful. Oh, there's why not. Okay, so down goes. Mm, it's going to have to uh, mirror coat here. And there, do okay, it does. I was going to say, does Krogunk run physical? And then I was like, no, it doesn't because Vacuum Wave is special. I mean, I'm sure it can run like mixed because Sucker Punch. But um, mostly special with like Vacuum Wave and Sludge Bomb and Icy Wind. That's a big one for Glagar. But yeah, Vacuum Wave is a big priority, and it doesn't have a uh, Mach Punch, so it goes special usually. So, indeed, down it goes to the Mirror Coat. Why not doing its thing? So, it, I really like this team from Evito. You know, the double booms. The double, um, double booms, one of which is Stab. And then, why not for forcing another KO? So, this kind of strategy, I mean, it's specific to this tier, of course, with the skitty of it all. But... I like the concept to apply to other tiers, you know, I've made some teams, I, I've enjoyed a lot of teams that are in this vein in DPP OU, and uh, just like in OU, then the biggest thing in the last three slots is how do you clean it up, how do you lock down that win? So here comes Chinchou, which is going to scare it out because of the spadef drop, and Snover avoids the Hydro Pump. This is going to be HP Fire Chinchou, it is not as much lax switches right into a wood hammer, gets its Orin Berry activated. But, uh, and that's going to scare it out with Fire Punch or Super Power, but Protect for the extra chip. Beautiful. And out it goes into Gligar. Scarf? No, Orin. So, I don't, you don't even bother rocking at this point. You just, okay, you U-turn for chip. And in comes Stunky. Does Stunky learn Explosion? I know Skuntank does, of course, but I don't know if uh, Stunky does. Oh, there's a nasty freeze. And in comes Chin Chow again. But if it's not HP Fire, it should be fine. Oh, there's the Thought, and it does learn Explosion. I'm glad that was answered. So we've got the Triple Boom, and then uh, the Why Not, and then Snover and Gligar as good Pokemon as any to finish things off. So the Double Down Gligar comes back in. Munchlax isn't going to be able to beat it, and it's a Gligar last. So almost surely not going to be able to muscle its way through these three. As Aqua Tail takes it out, but... Yeah, I yeah, I think uh, Kip's team here is an example of a nice move there, Encore, to prevent any shenanigans. Uh, but I think Kip's team is a, st is a great example of the kind of DPP Little Cup that I recognize. You know, it's a uh, more old, it's, it's an older style. You know, the Snover, Munchlax, Bronzor, Gligar, Chin, Shao, Krogan, these are all like staples. If you were to say, oh, what does DPP Little Cup look like, then I and I think most people would give you an answer like this. Whereas the teams we've seen and the other three teams we've seen are definitely not. Which is good, of course, because you want these invitational tournaments to push the tier and to be emblematic of, you know, new, uh, developing strategies and all that jazz. So, Trace versus Coconut. Fanpy, oh, hell yeah. I love seeing Fanpy. Fanpy's a favorite of mine. So, I don't know why Ice Shard was uh, used there, unless it's just trying to break the sash before getting, oh. Oh, that's actually hilarious. There... Uh, that counter would not have KO'd if the Ice Shard didn't crit. Okay, that's really interesting. I feel bad. I love Fan P. Fan P and Teddy Ursa are just like OTP, you know? And uh, that marks the first time I've ever said OTP out loud. So, uh, another milestone. So, yeah. Counter Abra. I, after, I've never seen a uh, an Abra lead before, but actually... I've, it's one of those things that I know exists, like Meowth lead, but you rarely ever actually see it. But hey, that's uh, it was a nice heads up move for the Ice Shard, but now he's going to finish it off with, oh, not even Pursuit. Oh, Rain Dance, nice. That's a really nice twist. That does not get used on lead Abra. That's a, I really like that, to make sure you get the most out of it after that counter KO, so it's not just like a 5-5 in Essentials because Abra's down to 1 HP and there's a lot of things that can take away from it you use it to set up your team strategy. That's really good. Very heads up uh, team building. So, 
Buizel, oh, another favorite. In comes Krogunk, and rather than just uh, spam water into a possible Snover or Chinchow or, you know, water uh, water immunity like Krogunk or Mantike. Do people still use Mantike? Uh, goes for the bulk up on the switch, which makes it a lot scarier. Now, I don't know what cover... I, I assume it just use, uses Return. That's a perfect coverage in Little Cup, I think. There's no Empoleon to wall both of them. Uh, so... Yeah, what bulk up water? I guess you would want to run ice punch. Do you even need to run ice punch? I guess you know return hits Dratini hard enough with uh, plus one and um, and life orb. So yeah, I, ugh, Weasel another favorite and fake out to stall the rain turns and get a little bit of chip. Actually, does a pretty hefty chunk for an unstabbed minus one um, um one an unstabbed fake out from. Well, I guess it is Life Orb and it's Little Cup. You know, every time something does a lot of damage in Little Cup, you just think, oh, it's life. It's Little Cup, that's why. Uh, pre Violet, especially. But, uh, yeah, for it being plus one defense, I guess Buizel's not the Paragon of... Not a Paragon of Physical Bulk. Uh, and nicely, you see the Dry Skin replace the Life Orb recoil there. So, return just... Oh, it's not a Life Orb. I was going to say, hey, there's no way... Cro it's Aura Berry, okay. There's no way that that actually lives... And comes Ghastly, beautiful pivot there, really making the most of the resistances. And now Ghastly is, but Ghastly is slower than Buizel. Well, okay, if you're running Buizel on Rain, I guess you would run um, Orenberry, or, or sorry, uh, Adamant instead of Jolly. So Tim and Ghastly would outspeed uh, Adamant Buizel. Uh, hmm. And I was gonna say it felt like it, that was a fairly short rain duration, but then I realized the Abra Elite is gonna run uh, Sash, not damp rock but oh there uh, yeah i was gonna say when i was uh figuring out the moveset bulk up waterfall return and then aqua jet in the last slot because that's why you don't need ice punch but uh um, it's nice because even outside of rain then you are going to get a big hit off and even though it's picked off here and i'm not gonna say that you know ghastly weakening ghastly is really essential because it's not like it's the kind of thing that can take a hit especially from a hard hitting team like a rain team but uh, for something like Voltorb, Thunderbolt, I think that do that does make a difference, so. I was surprised to not see Life Orb on that Buizel, but, uh, I mean, if you're bulking up especially, that might make a difference against a Munchlax in a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, it's Scarf Ghastly, as it outspeeds the Voltorb and gets another Sludge Bomb off, and I assume this Voltorb is going to be Damp Rock. And now in comes Kabuto, with Krogunk down, and goes for the Rock Slide to not uh, give up a free turn. Not give up a turn to pick up the KO on Ghastly and not give up a turn uh, through through what's it called? Uh, hitting into Dry Skin with the water move with the waterfall. So or uh, Aqua Jet because Scar. I wonder if Scarf Ghastly outspeed. No, it doesn't outspeed. Well, I guess it could. Anyway, Scarf Ghastly outspeeding it. Actually, we're about to find out if it comes back in now. Oh, a Krabby instead. 18, so it's going to go up to 27. Yeah, I don't know if Adam and Kabuto can hit 27 speed. Well, I don't know how uh, what the max is, but it can if it's Jolly, but again, the Adam versus Jolly debate. But, uh, which, and on a rain team, you're generally going plus attack. So, uh, I guess in a tier as fast as DPB LC, it's different because you're already hitting so many things so hard that you might want the extra speed to outrun uh, faster Scarfers. But then again, we saw Weasel fail to Oko uh, Krogunk there, so maybe not. Anyway, Krabby is another cool choice that I've never really seen in Little Cup in action. He goes for the Rock Slide to hopefully get the... F yeah, there's the flinch. It does a lot, but it's, it's still going to need another. And Krabby is going to return with... Oh, it's not going to return anything. I was going to say... Uh, a big uh, water, a waterfall of its own, boosted by the rain, but no. And now Munchlax, whew, that is a big, big uh, waterfall. Just barely, and another flinch. Oh, that's lame. Uh, three in a row. The rocks like can miss too. So here comes Houndour to get Aqua Jet. Yeah, okay, that's the game. So that would have been a a. Uh, an interesting one, but it was ruined. But this is why we have best of three. So, in comes another Mankey lead against an Apom lead. I'm, 
the tier feels so fresh. It's so different from what I, how I remember. And I like the way I remembered it. Ghastly on fake out and not wanting to take, I don't know, Thief or something? Because uh, you don't switch out if you're fearing Pursuit. Just gets you turned on. Bronzor coming in, trying to get a Brox on whatever switches in. Gligar is not going to chase it out. Instead, it's just going to chip it with the uh, U-turn as rocks go up. I'm not sure if that was the move, but I guess that also signals, hey, uh, Bronzor might be kind of difficult for Coconut's team to break through. Now, Will-O-Wisp goes off and Houndour's Flash Fire is active and just going to go right for Crunch, not even bothering trying to Pursuit Trap. So Houndour is in perfect position to make something happen. And down it goes. Down goes the dust call. So, Gligar comes in. And that's, well, that's just more Bronzor. Bronzor comes in, gets the Orin Berry, and it's back in action. I don't know if it's going to get a Brox or anything. I mean, Aqua Tail does a decent chunk, but Bronzor. Yeah, so rocks go up. It's just going to eat a Psychic, but it, it can recycle here if it wants. Now we just focus on weakening the uh, Gligar as much as possible. Orin Berry's gone. Aqua Tail missing. And, oh, it's HP Ice, okay. I guess, uh, the, on the first, on the Rocks turn, it wasn't sure if it was a Rocks Gligar. So just Psychic to hit the switch as hard as possible. And then thinking, okay, no way, Gligar just stays in and, you know, attacks, right? It's going to U-turn, so Psychic on the switch. And now, with the intent Coconut has clear, you know, to weaken Bronzor as much as possible through repeated Aqua Tails, then you pop the HP Ice. And now Gligar is down. So, helpful Aqua Tail miss, of course, you know, remember the game we just had, so... Uh, Apom is going to come in and finish off with a U-turn and reveal a fourth Pokemon. I guess didn't want to fake out into Ghastly. But yeah, uh, Krogon comes in and Ghastly has another positional advantage. Oh, but there, down it goes to the Sucker Punch immediately. I don't know if that was the right move because now nothing changes for Elekid. Alright, now that's interesting. I, what hit back, is that HP? Oh, ground, yeah. Okay, I was going to say, is that HP? Well, it's not HP Psychic. Could it be HP Flying? I was like, no, Ground makes a lot more sense for uh, Lantern. Uh, uh, Chin Chow, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, OU player habits. My apologies. So, that Sucker Punch is hitting really hard, and it's not even Bandit or something. I mean, not, not that you need a Bandit to KO Ghastly, but I mean, the Elekid. But then again, Elekid is not exactly frail. And now it's going to... Ni oh, nice. I wonder if... That might not have been too much of an attempted uh, advantage press by Coconut. Staying in and letting Krogon go down. Because if Mankey comes in... I mean... Actually, you kind of want Krogon to stay healthy no matter what. Because with Gligar and Duskull down, and now Krogon, I have a hard time imagining that the last two Pokemon are going to be good at taking Scarf Close Combat. So... I don't know, that, that felt like a big risk. And yeah, hitting Mankey on the switch would have been nice, but much worse is opening it yourself up to a sweep. If, you know, Coconut is indeed opening herself up to a sweep. So... Mm, yeah, but it just felt like too much of a risk anyway. And uh, Trace... I mean, is really, really scared of this Krogunk. I, I get the idea, like, oh, wouldn't Trace try to, you know pivot around, keep it, everything as healthy as possible. I don't know what the Ghastly thing was about, because, you know, imagine you have this Elekid interaction going down, and you still have Ghastly in the back. Uh, but down it goes, in comes Apom to get a free fake out off. No static. Oh, I was just predicting it, because static makes things uh, unfun. Yeah, there's Munchlax as the last, so that's obviously not taking CC, but Trace doesn't even go for it, going for a U-turn to soften the last possible fighting switch in. So yeah, I think that Krogunk thing was definitely overdoing it. Now Snover is U-turned into and gets a free wood hammer off, nothing switching into it, and Talo. Now, I love seeing Talo for sure, but it's not going to do anything here. <laughs> I had a team I really liked with Talo. Uh, but yeah, just got ice sharded and Snover is cleaning this one up nicely. So yeah, 1-1 uh, going to game 3. Beautiful. Okay. This is why best of three is good. Now, not ideal, of course. It doesn't fix every problem, but it makes the game better. And that's what we should... Uh, Spinarek, okay. Is this like a DPP Uber situation where... No, it's not. Uh, it's like Arianos. No, but uh, I guess there's a, the second use of T-Spike, so I guess they are somewhat meta now. And a Machop lead. Now, that's my kind of DPP little cup. Uh, as it D-punches into the quad fighting resist. For the confusion, of course. 
try to force some switches because I guess Spinarek does not really fear Machop's moves usually because it's not running Stone Edge. Uh, it's going to be you know the sta- the old standard of Machamp in OU. Forgive the comparison. Uh, D punch, payback, bullet punch, ice punch. You gotta have ice punch for Gligar, uh, payback for Ghastly, and BP for priority. You can't fit Stone Edge in there. What do you even need it for? You know, it's no like Gyarados or anything running around. So and like Mantike doesn't exactly take uh, D punch well anyway. So by the same logic that Machamp rarely runs Stone Edge in OU, then uh, Machop will never run it in Little Cup. So going for the confusion there, just to force switches, make something happen, cause some chaos, and maybe get up some rocks with Gligar. Well, the sash is broken if, at the very least, and the confusion goes off. So now the rocks are up, and HP Ice Spinnerek. Oh, this! I wasn't planning on making this video when I woke up, but I was like, you know, what? What do I have time for that it'll be fun and quick and easy on the on the old brain, and and I'll uh, be able to. Uh, just knock out with minimal effort and, and enjoy. Uh, well, I knew I would enjoy this, but I didn't know I would enjoy this on the level of... What was the thing that happened in the other game? The uh, Skitty Explosion and HPI Spinarek. Oh, these are wonderful. So and down goes Gligar through the confusion. It comes Stunky to pick the T-Spikes up, but hey, Spinarek KO'd Gligar. That's a positive trade if I ever saw one. Now, unfortunately, the Stunky can go two for one very easily if the answer is uh, Munchlax because then you can just blow it up, and that's also a positive trade, and instead, no need, because the Munchlax immediately blows itself up, and, which is, you know, Munchlax into Stunky is already a danger sign of sorts. Uh, and now, Duskull catches the boom, which marks the second Munchlax blowing up into a ghost of the day, and now another Stunky. You know, the blowing up, I mean, blowing up Munchlax uh, with pursuit support is great, but uh, obviously it's predicated on Stunky getting, or Houndour, getting the trap off first. And there's a Pursuit, Will-O-Wisp, and now looking like, oh, there's pressure to uh, crunch now because if the second Pursuit goes off against Duskull, Ornberry is triggered, and then Duskull's, um, uh, Ornberry is triggered, and Stunky is burned, and then it will not get the trap off. So Trace tries to escape, nicely played by Coconut to be aware of that, and uh, down Duskull goes. And now there's a two-for-one with Stunky blowing up. What a wild game. I love this tier. Uh, so the Stunky, one Stunky explodes on another, and uh, <laughs> I was going to say mating ritual. <laughs> anyway, uh, so it comes Machop again into Snover. Snover, not a great one-on-one, -on -one, but it's going to hit it hard at the very least, and even if it trips up Orin, then it's going to be in KO range of other things because Machop is not known for its bulk. It's just bulky enough to take that first hit. Afterwards, not so much. But uh, it is going to eat a crit surf. Now, I don't know. If Blizzard did 71, I don't know that Staryu Surf would do 64. So that's an unfortunate one. And remember, Staryu is pure water. It's not water psychic like Starmie, so it would have eaten Dynamic Punch. Not that it really makes a difference. D-Punch versus Payback in this situation. But yeah, uh, something to keep in mind. Cosmic Power Staryu. Is it going to beat much like the one out? No way. I mean, it's going to get the second cosmic power off, and then what? It recover stalls it while Munchlax goes down to hail. How much does it do at plus two? Still 43, which is still 50 with hail. Uh, I gotta say, I, I've seen plenty of Staryu in my time, but I've never seen uh, cosmic power Staryu. And it failing to beat this Munchlax one on one is probably a good indicator of why. Yeah, alright, so this is, feels like it's just a matter of time, especially because... Wait, did... Look at that roll! It went from 43 to 33. I mean, I know that's a little cup for you, but... And now it goes up to 48, yeah. On consecutive turns... See, look! Turn 16... Did 33%, so much less. Those crazy LC rolls. And now it's, uh... 48, so... So much for stalling it. Because it's, it's gonna get, a. Uh, you don't have enough recovers to outstall return, first of all, and the Munchlax is going to have an Orin Berry, and uh, look, I mean, y you need another Cosmic Power to have a chance, but you don't have any opportunity for that Cosmic Power, so just another recover, and uh, the crit odds are getting nastier with each turn, so far we've had 11 without a crit, 12, 13... Munchlax hasn't even had Ornberry tripped yet. 
because uh, hail does less in little cups. See, it's doing like three-ish percent. Like uh, like with burn and everything, like burn, life orb, stealth rock, and there's the Orenberry. So, uh... oh, and Staryu's already out of her covers, pretty much. You know, it's got two left. So all it did was a really. Oh, and there's the crit finally. How many recovers did it have left? One. So yeah, it took 17 returns, but there's a crit. And Porygon last. Agility, it's not going to beat this much, Lax, one-on-one. -on -one. Brick Break, the non-attack dropping option uh, for hitting other Snorlax, much Lax harder. Agility, last resort, that's so cool. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad people are bringing such fun stuff to this tournament. Does Brick Break even hit harder than return? 75, 150? No, it doesn't. Return slightly stronger, so I have to assume that is for... Well, there's no... Qu Aaron, maybe? You know, so it doesn't set up a rock polish on you. And why would you want to over superpower? I don't know. It, you know, it must be for some sort of screen busting. In case you think, oh, reflect light screen into Belly Drum Zigzagoon. Or something. Anyway, speaking of uh, last ditch sweepers, last resort sweepers, hello. Uh, oh, and, and a Zigzagoon, too. How awesome. So, E Speed is not going to KO the Porygon, I don't think. And last resort will almost surely take it out, right? Oh, but it crits. <laughs> what an end. Yeah, okay, I think that evened out, you know, all, all things considered. Wow, that was a very fun series. Continuing on, Avarice versus Mendez. That has to be a Mendez nuts, nuts joke. Anyway, uh, Scarf Gasly? Uh, is it Scarf? No, it's Sash. What am I talking about? Smoochum is uh, slower, naturally. Uh, and Sludge Bomb takes it down low, and Smoochum, which is used... Let's look at that Smoochum sprite. Oh, that's adorable. That's shiny, too. Uh, it's going to... I don't know. I don't think it runs Ice Shard. I think it's more like Fake Out, Psychic, Ice Beam, Taunt kind of... Oh, uh, Lovely Kiss. What am I talking about? Yeah, Fake Out, Stabs, Lovely Kiss. So, Ghastly is going to... Oh, there's a Sucker Punch just in case. Nice move. And like Sludge Bomb, it you know does nothing to the switching in Bronzor. Gets a Brox, Munchlax into Bronzor. Fire Punch is a threat, of course. And immediate Orenberry going off down... And now it's going to have to switch out into Munchlax, takes advantage of the force switch into Munchlax, and gets the one-up on the opposing Lax, with the return doing more damage, and not going to risk it, in comes Duskull, the Munchlax answer, avoiding the superpower, clinically done, in comes Bronzor again, no uh, Munch, or Houndour coming in to absorb the Wisp as it dodges the burn, which is unfortunate, and there's the recycle, now, Munchlax coming in again, and another return. Nicely done. No more, no pivoting into Fire Punch there. That was very... Mendes is really putting on the pressure. Now, uh, gonna try and... I thought the... Yeah, I don't know. I thought the Smoochum would try to regain some ground with Lovely Kiss to put, some, to put something to sleep, but instead Psyche just trips up the Orenberry, and down it goes to return. So I don't know about that one. Now, Gas is gonna have to, like... Boom or something? Shadow Ball Munchlax. That's hilarious. I've never seen that. But Shadow Ball Munchlax to bypass burns. That's actually hilarious. Oh, Sludge Bomb just barely takes it out. I think uh, Everest was banging, uh, banking on uh, Munchlax being afraid of Life Orb Sludge Bomb taking it down. But instead, uh, Munchlax picks up yet another KO. It's third of the game. Gl Duskull into Gligar on the U-turn. What's threatening it? You know? Oh, Bronzor into Duskull. That's... Not a good sign. <laughs> so, Mendes is looking to run away with this one. Very impressive performance. Oh, and there's a Thief! Thief uh, 1981, directed by Michael Mann. As uh, the Orenberry has been taken by Duskull for itself. Nicely done. A lot of... Uh, the synergy on this team feels overwhelmingly powerful. Uh, for and uh, conducive to aggressive play, which is the name of the game in this tier. So Chinchow gets an agility off, gets a second agility off against the Burn Bronzor. Not oh, we're just gonna say not threatening it with EQ, so it can outrun any any uh, any faster Scarfers, but it gets crit. But I don't know, he feels so far ahead. I don't know if it's gonna make a diff. So Duskull gets its Orin back. I think uh, I need to tell YouTube to keep playing the the thing. And uh, now Chin Chow comes in, and uh, oh, so now Duskull has uh, baited the thief. So now Duskull has scarfed itself. That's a great. That's a really cool play. Wow, so much unique uh, 
interaction in this tier. Yeah, Chin Chow baits the Dust Skull into thieving and then switches to Glagar so that uh, Glagar winds up. Uh, so Dust Skull winds up stealing Glagar's scarf, and a scarf Glagar is not. Or a scarf Dust Skull, sorry, is not nearly as threatening. So, Ghastly is sacrificed against the no longer scarf Glagar, and Snover comes in, and Snover's gonna be fine against these anyway, so. Chen Chao doesn't want to come in, even if it's HP fire, it'd be pivot into the ice move, HP fire scare it out. It is HP fire! I don't know why Gligar was sacrificed then, it could still be useful. Yeah, I don't know, that felt, y your only chance was to, I mean, I don't know, it was like, predicting like a wood hammer on the switch or something, but, I don't know, I think pivot into Chen Chao there, keep yourself alive. HP fire, you know, and if you think... Mendes is going to switch out, then you can make something happen with that. I mean, it was still a losing position, but it was something. Game two, Abra Machop. All right, Machop, um, yeah, that, that's another thing that Abra does. It has inner focus, so it cannot be flinched by, what am I talking about, flinched? Uh, Machop doesn't run, um, run, what's it called? Uh, fake out? No, I'm, I'm confusing it. So there are dual screens, so I'm seeing the use of that Brick Break uh, Munchlax earlier. And... Bronzor gets a Prox against the Abra, not taunting. And now it's going to Psychic Spam into a Swords Dancing Gligar. Swords Dance is not something you see on Gligar too often. Uh, but there's the HP Ice uh, Bronzor, and there's no way that this is going to... Yeah, so Bronzor just takes out Gligar. I mean, it's been weakened, it's had its Ornberry activated, but it's still a decent enough health if it has Recycle. I mean, it went down, but... Abra's not going to be much of a threat, and Gligar, a big threat, has been taken down, so definitely net positive for Mendes, I think. It comes Gligar into Houndour, KOs through Reflect with EQ, and yeah, still looks advantageous. Machop pivoting into a crit U-turn, does a fairly nasty chunk. In comes Abra again. What's the psychic answer going to be? Oh, Munchlax, of course. God, that does a lot, and it's a nasty crit. Oh, lord. So Reflect setting up, and it can take two returns. It can even get up a light screen. And, wow, so... Unless this Munchlax starts recycling or something, then... Yeah, that crit really, really stings. Because now Munchlax is gonna... Well, okay, Krabby's going to be threatening it either way, so maybe not the most devastating thing. But there's the screen set up again with more... Oh, Munchlax is going to stay and uh, switch in and... Yeah, it looks like uh, this team does not hit Krabby Su- oh, and it's Double Dance. It's not hitting Krabby super hard uh, behind the screens, and now it looks like it just might get that sweep off. So that crit was fairly big, but I don't know about game breaking. As now Krabby is going to pull off an impressive sweep, we're going to game three. Staryu versus Gligar, and it's just surfing, and it's a Sash Gligar, which is why it stays in. I'm gonna go for the rocks, because Rapid Spin does not really exist. It's a Speed Tie. I did not yeah, they're both 19. Oh, it is Rapid Spin. I eat my words. I have never seen Rapid Spin in Little Cup before, even when EO Uts... Well, ex except for when EO Ut Mortis was trying to use Stall in DVP LC because he just wanted to use Stall in the summer of 2010. But uh, other than that, I mean, hey, if you don't have to deal with rocks, you don't have to deal with rocks. Maybe there's a Sash user hanging back somewhere. So, uh, at the very least, Gligar wins the second speed tie, the important one, and gets the... Uh, EQ off to do a hefty chunk and take Starmie's Orenberry. So, beautiful uh, pivot to Diglett here on the T-Bolt and taking Chin Chow out in response. So, very aggressive start to the game and Avers is really in the driver's seat again. Munchlax again and Pursuit thinking it's going to switch, but now, oh, now you're going to take two EQs minimum. Yeah. And, oh, it's a double-edged Munchlax. I see the hesitation to... I mean, not that the recoil is huge, but every percent counts. And But the power of uh, Double Edge is really something on lack. And a tier that already struggles to switch into return. So, And hey, sometimes you might even be able to Double Edge yourself into Orenberry range. So, Talo comes in, tries to uh, pick it off with Facade, blanks into Dust Skull. As always, Dust Skull looks like a major threat. There's the double into Munchlax. I'm not sure what that was for. I, I totally could be overlooking something. I freely accept that possibility. Uh, but just simply because of Munchlax's low speed means that at low health it's not going to get that one-on-one -on -one adva advantage against something that you might want on a double switch like that. In comes Mankey instead and CC. Now we haven't seen any fighting resists yet, so we're going to see one almost surely, and there is indeed Ghastly. There's the Houndour, the shiny Houndour, I extremely approve. Oh, and a nasty Spideftrop. Uh, 
So it's gonna avoid the trap. Oh, it's uh, avoiding the forced sucker punch too. Look at how the shiny hound hour almost blends into the background. That's so nice. Uh, yeah, so the hound door is there to support the scarf CC sweep, and I mean it, it's very possible that you know remove the ghastly and the uh, Maggie might take it home, and instead, uh, oh, that's a really nice heads up move. Oh, we're seeing so much great stuff in this tournament. I'm so glad it was it's put together. Uh, so we see hound hour chipped by Munchlax's pursuit. Uh, I have a video called the power of pursuit, and I think I, there's a section about pursuing like pursuit weak Pokemon because of stuff like this. I mean, Hound Hour is frail, but I mean, that's kind of the point. Uh, that extra chip may means that it can't even... Potentially, it might not even be able to switch into uh, Sucker Punch... Or Sucker Punch. A uh, Shadow Ball anymore. I mean, it's Orin... Okay, never mind. I take it back. Uh, it's Orin Berry gets tripped up there. So, I guess that might have been counterintuitive. <laughs> but, uh... But, the th it, you know, it might mean that the Orin Berry might not come into play later. So, uh, it might still work. Uh, remains to be seen. Duskull in again. Double two Hound Hour on the Talo, trying to absorb the burn. And back to Duskull. Is it going to eat a Brave Bird? No, it's going to blanket a facade again. So Duskull is now face to face with the Pokemon that Avarice tried to switch into it. And in comes Munchlax on the Frustration, which is uh, Duskull's go to move for this one. Wait, what? Because, you know, low base, or er, low bulk in Little Cup means that high base power move, even on a. You know, and the, the attack stats all generally are similar enough to where it averages out. So it actually does pretty decent damage. But of course, oh, uh, there's a nasty miss. Well, it's Fire Punch at least, so it's not going to be threatening much. But, you know, avoid... It. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Good, uh, goodness. There's Pluck. Oh, and a crit, and it eats the Orn Bear. That's really, really rough. That's terrible. So there's a Protect a Scout for the move being used. Now, Munchlax can switch into Ice Punch, of course, because of Thick Fat, but not really uh, rife with options here. Oh, I was going to say, not really rife with options other than hoping for a freeze, and he gets it. Now, let's see if it's going to be enough, because those last couple turns were really, really, really rough. Um, oh, instead of attacking, just goes right to Mankey in close combats, but now Ghastly gets a free Shadow Ball. Oh, wait, but uh, Houndour has had the Orenberry gifted to it again, but with Gligar last, then... Oh, uh, that, that, uh, that, uh, yeah, so hope you crit the, you hope you freeze the ghastly. Oh, it's scarf and ex explodes, never mind. Yeah, I don't know, that, that was a really rough ending. I don't know how, I mean, it was really nicely played from both players, but unfortunately Pokemon had to interfere. That, the stuff against the Duskull was just really, really rough. Okay, I'm going to take a bathroom break because I've been drinking a lot of tea this morning, and I will be right back. All right, let's rock with the next series, Gorex versus Alkion. Star you uh, into reflecting into that Machamp lead and getting confused. Well, Orenberry gives us some leeway, but Machamp's or er, Machamp, Machop subs 
Uh, but it's going to break out of confusion, so not getting too much out of it. Maybe. You don't see sub on Machop lead all that often, but it's obviously an amazing uh, move for situations like this. You know, rather than deep punching into the Ghastly, you get that free payback on it. And Orin Ghastly, so, but it's not going to be able to take another one. Yeah, that's just is going to be useful for later. And... Ooh, so it's getting a burn onto... Gligar is an unusual Ghastly switch, and, I mean, taking anything from... I mean, I guess if you're expecting it's going to be another Sludge Bomb, then sure, it's a decent pivot. I mean, Ghastly is just such a pain to switch around. Sometimes you have to take unconventional measures. So the Reflect really helping out there. A uh, nice bit of team building to give some leeway in that difficult... Okay, well, if the Gligar is going to be Swords Dancing while Burn, it's... Okay, that Aqua Tail actually did a pretty respectable chunk. So, maybe, never mind, but uh, it's still going to be a fairly neutered Gligar as it gets taken out by the HP Ice, and Bronzor gets up rocks on it, too, and only loses 26%. So now it goes Machop, another Orin Berry, and this is going to be the real threat. D-Punch, and breaking through the confusion and Psychicking. So, Machop at least is out of the picture now. So, yes, uh, Bronzor goes down, but now, so it has Machop. So we have a very fast-paced 4-4, in comes Munchlax, you gotta weaken this, you gotta... Well, return, obviously. Oh, but there's the Brick Break! <laughs> there's the Brick Break going through the Reflect and KOing Star Me from... Uh, Star You from 40. So, lot, I guess that's the meta now. <laughs> Ghastly is gonna come in and Sludge Bomb... Or, or Will-O-Wisp, as Ghastly pivots into Ghastly, knowing Shadow Ball will not be used there, and then lose the Speed Tie, and... Ugh, rough. Yeah, Ghastly is kind of a pain. Now, uh, switching out of that Shadow Ball, which would bypass a burn... Uh, coming into, going to Gligar, and in comes Snover, just freely, free to EQ. I mean, yeah, you're gonna get Snover back to good, I mean, that's so cool about DPP Little Cup. You have the Stealth Rock Wii Pokemon switching into a strong EQ, and it actually winds up at higher health than it would have just taken the rocks because of Orinberry. So, uh, there's the U-turn, not fearing the Ice Shard, or, you know, make, it's, it's basically saying, make a choice, you know, Ice Shard the Gligar, or, you know, get U-turned on. You know, so it doesn't give a, get a free Swords Dance, and that actually makes a difference because now it is not going to be able to... I mean, it's going to take down the Munchlax, but it's not... I mean, it might have... the recoil. No, it wouldn't have taken itself out through Recoil, I don't think. So, a uh, nice way to force the position there, you know, rather than predicting, oh, will it SD? Will it, won't it SD just, you know, guarantee that it will not get an SD without taking heavy damage? So... You turning out a Munchlax into Chinchow, Hail, helping uh, push Munchlax into that Orenberry range. But there's a paralyzing T Bolt. But I think at this point it's looking pretty good for Gorex anyway. So that's game one. Game two. Growl <gasps> Growlithe lead, Chimchar lead. I'm in heaven. Oh, this is. This is beautiful. Okay. So, fake out. I don't know what Growlithe lead does. I have to assume it's like UU Arcanine, you know, Flare Blitz, E Speed. Uh, and then, like, other stuff like Hidden Power, you know, Will-O-Wisp if you want, you know, Morning Sun, it does have Intimidate, so, and Chimchar lead, well, you know, Fake Out rocks, of course, so Gligar's not gonna stop it from rocking. This is just gonna go for Fire Blast, okay, Flare Blitz, Fire Blast, same thing. So, and it's gonna crit it down to the Sash, amusingly, and, oh, HP Ground? Rock? Water? I don't know what that, I've never seen Hidden Power on Chimchar before. But whatever it is, uh, I mean, maybe for, to account for Growlithe leads, uh, which it does not e-speed. Does Growlithe even learn e-speed? I have to assume it does, because that would be, you know, a big advantage in using it as a lead. But, hey, Intimidate Growlithe, you know, slowing down Machop lead. I like that a lot. So, uh, go and now it goes for a not very effective HP Ice into the Chimchar, so that makes me think, okay, HP Ice. I mean, could still be Grass, but... Yeah, now Staryu's gonna scare it out, and comes Munchlax. Uh, and taking him. Pretty hefty chunk, but uh, it's now in position to not blank into... God, that neutral Ice Punch does so much. Much like is so strong. As uh, Ghastly's back at full because of Orin, of course. But uh, the difference between blanking into Ghastly with Return and Ice Punching it there is, of course, that Orin has now been activated. There's a sub scouting the switch. In comes Bronzor, Shadow Ball, phew, hitting hard, but like... Uh, and the Orenberry on Bronzor's end is going to let it get up rocks and then break the sub. But it's not going to... So the flexibility of Orenberry is basically a substitute for bulk in uh, Little Cup. That's the dynamic to be taken from this. In comes Gligar. 
I'm uh, going to scare it out with Scarf Night Slash, which star you can take. Especially now that Orin has got off. God, I'm going to be you know going crazy by all these Orin berries I've seen by uh, the end of this video. It comes Chin Chow going to rapid spitting it into Orin berry range. Okay, so, I mean, you get KO'd by the T-Bolt and you he uh, healed the uh, Chin Chow, but you also got rid of the rocks. So, Growlithe weakens the Munchlax through Intimidate heroically. Amazing Growlithe. And now in comes Ghastly to... Well, it's not going to like taking Pursuit. So much like it's still an issue. Uh, but the Sludge Bomb Poison helps a little. And it can still take a Pursuit. Yeah, especially with... Uh, so the Sludge Bomb Poison helps a lot. Because now it can sub down... Oh, it's not even going to sub down. You don't need to. You just uh, 2 a KO it. Uh, through the Poison. And uh, the minus 1, of course. So... A oh, Cyndaquil? <gasps> Scarf Eruption Cyndaquil? I really am in heaven. Oh, this is too good. Okay. It's just going to erupt to... Yeah, because Munchlax is... Oh, beautiful. Wait, okay. So much going on here. Erupt so you don't uh, you know, switch Ghastly into another Ice Punch. And just weaken the Munchlax. You know, you can take a... I assume you can take a return. I mean, not the Cyndaquil. It's going to be... I, I don't think Cyndaquil as a of Cyndaquil as a bulky Pokemon, which maybe it can take a return. And you get one full power eruption off, then you switch out. Well, actually, you might get pursued, but maybe not. Uh, and you'll be in Blaze range. So you, later you can come back with Scarf uh, Fire Blast. And... Yeah, but instead uh, it goes for the Ice Punch immediately. And freezes, but eruption doesn't thaw out, I don't think. Oh, that's that's unfortunate. And Cyndaquil is just going to be sacrificed here as Gorex continues to spam. And Charmander! Oh my god! I've never seen Charmander before in Little Cup. Okay, if Charmander could take a return, Cyndaquil definitely could. So, I don't know what this is. If it's like DD or something. <laughs> but we see the triple a fire starter duo. Oh. Hopefully someone uses Torchic later. Uh, so... Oh, that's so cool. What a strategy. So lead off with Chimchar, Scarf Eruption, whatever this Charmander does. Double Edge. I think it might actually be DD. And unfortunately, it just gets, you know, blanks you. I don't think it's going to go too well, but... Yeah, unfortunate Ice Punch Freeze uh, getting in the way of amazing innovation. Cyndaquil. Okay. Thaw out. Thaw out. No, that's so unfortunate. I would have thought out and gotten that Scarf Fire Blast off in Blaze range. I don't know. That game might have... It might have been the game. Well, who's to say? So, that's the series. Now we move on to Joltage versus, versus Keja Das. Dutch. Uh, pronunciation that I have not been doing in a long time. Ooh, Mankey, you turn punished by static right off the bat. That's that's already going to be a huge part of the game. If Joltage wins, that's going to be a significant part of it, I'm sure. And uh, Snover comes in and we can... So, Elekid is... Already taken, you know, an arm and a leg, pretty much. It's paralyzed the Mankey and taken out Snover. I mean, it's amazing. It's even going to get a quick attack off to... Uh, oh, it doesn't just chip Stunky. It gets to chip Stunky a couple times because... Or it doesn't chip Stunky a second time. Wow. Look at Elekid putting in work. Uh, I think Joltage's username is, you know, they're pairing their electric uh, sensibilities together for maximum impact. But yeah, you don't uh, quick attack again because you don't want to activate Orin Berry yet. But the Sucker Punch goes off and now St Stunky is also paralyzed. Oh, it doesn't even have Orin. It has Lum. But now you know it's Lum. You know it doesn't have Orin. So that's huge. Now Gligar's going to chase it out. Met with another Gligar. Aqua Tail on the switch. Dol Joltage is having a whale of a game already. Uh, knowing that's like pretty much the best answer you're going to get at this point. It's either that or Duskull. So you go for the Aqua Tail there, knowing Stunky's not going to risk it. So beautiful. Way out in front, Snover comes in on Gligar's Aqua Tail. Not even ice moving uh, to, you know, thud into the Munchlax resist. No, you go for the Wood Hammer and hit it really hard. Burn the Orin. And Drifloon. Oh, that's so cool. Let's get a look at that uh, other end. Drifloon's, the other side, Drifloon Sprite. Oh, that's so cool. Now, uh, eating a double edge, too. And HP, yep, HP fighting as uh, it is neutral into Stunky. Now, the Stunky is faster, so it's going to get a crunch or a pursuit off. So, yeah, okay, Drifloon is down. But Joltage is still very, very far ahead. You know, because that whole sequence that happened before, now Munchlax can't really switch into stuff. You know, Hail's active, Orin is burned. It even, you know, has double edge, so it has to be careful with its stab. And there's uh, late rocks 
you know, late turn 11, but yeah, this is late by the uh, standards of this fast-paced game, uh, from Joltage, and uh, it's going to get a Brox and the KO the Stungy here, and I mean, yeah, Orin tripped, whatever, it's still at full health, very far ahead, so that those rocks are going to push more uh, KO ranges against Munchlax and Gligar, and okay, so Mankey can take a hit and threaten with uh, Ice Punch, okay, but actually full paras as Chinchou comes in. And agility, I don't know. I, I don't know if that was the move. I guess if you can take a CC in your Orin, then sure. I, and if Surf is not KOing from full health. Oh, it's Hydro. Well, okay, sure. But it's. Uh, I think I would have preferred uh, keeping Chinchou's health so that you can uh, go one on one with Munchlax potentially. You know, just to not risk giving any leeway. There's a T-Bolt, and much like this Para, Double Edge. Okay, so it's really, really low here. And much the, I mean, the Para helps. I mean, it would have just been Revenge by Gligar or Stover otherwise, but now Munchlax. Uh, you get to plant Munchlax in front of the opponent and say, okay, what is your answer to this? You know, it's much more forceful than the other two options. So, oh, well, okay, Machop, but I think at this point... Yeah, Munchlax drops in one, which is very rare, but it's just going to be won by Gligar and Snover anyway, almost surely. I mean, okay, Cage, look, fighting to the very end, Gligar comes into EQ, but and even goes first with Aqua Tail, but it's not going to withstand the other one. But if that Machop has uh, has Bullet Punch, I don't know, it, it could bring it back. A surprise... Oh, it's Scarf Machop! What a comeback! Oh, that's incredible. Wow. Okay, beautifully done. I didn't even consider Scarf. So, Joltage was... that. Oh, that's one of my favorite games so far, for sure. Joltage was out to such an incredible start, and Cage Das uh, kept her head and battled back into a game, even when the position looked really, really bad, and wound up cleaning with an unexpected Scarf D-Punch Machop. Well, of course it's D-Punch, but Scarf Machop. That's really cool. I am a huge fan of that. And I, I gotta say, I don't think the... I think the agility was a little maybe overdone for Joltage, but yeah, it goes to show how crucial every turn is. Next game, cannot wait. Joltage, uh, Machop, another offensive, very offensive lead, you know. Uh, Machop into Staryu, no reflect, just surfing. Whew, that does a lot. <laughs> Machop is real strong. Are you gonna pivot into a Ghastly here? No, just gonna get confused and down goes Staryu with Machop having taken barely any damage. Another strong start. Aerial Ace, not quite taking Machop out, and it can live- Oh, it doesn't live in Ice Punch, never mind, this is not OU where Gliscor always lives Machamp, uh, Ice Punch. So, I mean, this is another really good start, you know, the two for one with Machop, Chinchow Revenge kills, Gligar uh, comes in for the revenge, but now, you know, still not- uh, very, All the potential in the world for a comeback as Ghastly comes into Gligar, and all the- A lot of ways to threaten here, and subbing so it doesn't just thud into a pursuit. And uh, not even just attacking from behind the sub, going to Chinchow. I mean, okay, that wasn't exactly free. That crunch is going to be big. But the Hydro goes off and does a ton. So once again, Orin substituting in for Bulk, letting it take that, you know, one more Shadow Ball later. So Chinchow sacrifices itself. It's going to be all in on Ghastly, really. And I don't know if it's going to be enough because, yeah. So Diglett tries to Stealth Rock as, uh, well, it's Sashed. It's a Stealth Rock on Sucker Punch. But the Stungy just goes for Boom. I don't know if that Boom was necessary. You know, w wouldn't Crunch just functionally do the same thing? You know, and if you Crunch on the rocks there, then you can still have an opportunity to take it out with Sucker. But uh, either way, Dusko's going to finish it off with Shadow Sneak. But yeah, it's, I think this one might be too much of a deficit to come back from. Especially when there's a Dust Skull. You know, Dust Skull is a very unforgiving Pokemon. Excuse me. I mean, another Will-O-Wisp miss. Good lord. But uh, yeah, Munchlax is not going to make its way through this. So yeah, Duskull is just going to win this game fairly, fairly easily. You know, you sneak the Ghastly and the Diglett and Munchlax. I mean, even with the Freeze, but it's just, uh, Jolt is just too far ahead at this point. So even if the Ghastly blows up Munchlax, then it's just, you know, Duskull and a burn. It's going to be Diglett and a burn Munchlax against, you know, Gligar, which alone will win. And, uh, and Unrevealed, so. So we see, uh, Sash Diglett coming to good use, not just for its ability to take a hit, but for, uh, Reversal as well, but it's gonna sucker punch and beat Zigzagoon to the e-speed does not matter and this game is one for Joltage We are going to a game three very very hyped And we see Zigzagoon win so that's awesome 
All right, game three. Gligar Machop. Again, U-turn. What's the answer to this Machop? We're really pressing here. Into... Get, ghastly into the Ice Punch? Well, Orin's not going to help it out there. It's just going to blow up, so... I mean, the neutral trade is still very good. Ghastly's such a threat. If you can remove it early in the game. I mean, I trade a Machop early in the game for, uh, for Ghastly. So, now in comes Snover into Munchlax. Wood hammering it hard. And... Yeah, so you trade Snover for six, for 33% on uh, on Munchlax, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it is going to put it into KO range for a bunch of stuff. Uh, and Doduo's Brave Bird, definitely one of them. Haven't seen a Doduo uh, in... A, I don't want to say ever, I'm sure I've seen it once, but I can't remember it. So it's a, it's a very rare sight to see. And whether it's Bandit or Scarf, it's going to be a threat. So another uh, very cool Pokemon pick from Cage Das. Uh, in comes Gligar, which is going to be soundly defeated by the Stone Edge, which is the, an unusual choice on Gligar. Uh, but it, I mean, talk about hitting Snover hard. It's kind of like Aerial Ace, but uh, I guess it has better overall coverage. But, uh, yeah. So wins the speed tie if there was a speed tie in aqua tails and now munchlax and another dust skull ice punch freeze that this is starting to get uncanny <laughs> so dust uh do duo comes in again and it's gonna launch another brave bird it's gonna pluck and take oh it another crit on the dust skull with pluck what is going on uh and it's gonna take the orange berry which makes it easier for itself to spam brave bird with uh you know healing its own recoil off in that way that's so cool i'm a huge fan what other tier do you see the move pluck in it's like if orange berries are everywhere i'm gonna steal them so uh beautiful magnemite comes into if it's not scarfed then nope it's not scarfed glagar is hit by the hail first a lot of players like e even players in uh, big tournaments some that's a mechanic that sometimes escapes them you know checking for sand damage leftovers recovery uh, it's like, oh, well, can you tell if the Magnemite is Scarf or not? It's like, yes, you can, because Gligar was hit by a Hail First. It also uh, means, uh, it also, t yeah, excuse me, ability activation, whichever one goes first is the faster one. Like, um, the obvious idea is Groudon setting up Sun before, or Kyogre setting up Rain before Groudon, which is, you know, clear, because Kyogre is Scarf a lot. Um, but, so that means the Kyogre is going to be the fast one there. You know, speed tie at worst. But even stuff like, uh, I remember there was a World Cup game a long time ago where Weavile uh, led off against a Lander's Therian, and Weavile's pressure activated before Lando T's Intimidate, which says, oh, that, and the Lando T was Scarf. So it's like, oh, the Weavile is actually Scarf, because that was being used at the time. And that means, uh,. Yeah, and I think the player with the Lando T didn't notice it. I was, I was totally surprised by the Scarf Wee Violator. It's like, so, uh, things to pay attention to. Magnemite is not going to stand. It's going to go to Doduo. Does it get Stone Edge on the Switch? No, it doesn't. Does Doduo learn U-Turn? Surely it should, because I think you might want to... Yeah, so KG Das is just um, going for Hail Recovery here, because you got to go all in on that uh, Doduo sweep. And rather than try it again, down goes Magnemite. So now, is Munchlax going to come in? Yeah, take it out with uh, Ice Punch, staying in decently healthy condition with uh, Orin. So it's much like the Doe Duo against Stunky, which is gonna... Oh, Memento, not just Explosion, sacrificing itself so the last can set up. Is, there, is another Zigzagoon? Yes, there is another Zigzagoon. Belly Drum. This, unless this is a self-destruct Munchlax, in which case... Oh, it's Superpower! <gasps> oh! Nope, it's not going to be enough. Zigzagoon is going to go down to the second turn of Hail, I think. No, it's not. It's going to Thief. Oh, but the, the Orinberry is already spent, so it can't Thief the Orinberry. And down it goes to the Hail. What a finish. Oh, that's excellent. Even at minus two superpower, doing so much to Zigzagoon that uh, two turns of Hail took it out. I don't know what the roll was there, but that was a thriller of a finish and a great series. I really, really enjoyed that one. All right, so big props to all involved. Now, the next series, the penultimate series, I'm in all, I haven't seen the name, I'm in all in a long time. Star U light screening in the face of another Star U, another dual screener. Are we going to see, well, that's, uh, it's not going to be light clay, it's going to be uh, Orenberry, as that is activated by a return. And no brick break to be seen yet. Gligar stealth rocking as Star U comes back in. Chin Chow for the threat on the rapid spin. 
And uh, Chin Chow is... Is it going to T-Bolt into Diglett again? It does! That's the second time that's happened this round slash this video. And down Chin Chow goes. So, big advantage for OJR, but in comes Snover. Oh, but hey, I mean, that's fine because Snover goes for return, signifying Swords Dance, I believe. And, but Diglett gets a Brox because it's, uh, I mean, the Sash doesn't, the Sash mattered in so far as it allowed it to stay in on potential Scarf Snover. But it doesn't uh, stop it from, uh, so it could get a Brox, you know, that's all you really wanted. So Diglett, you know, putting in some work there. And in comes Staryu, threatening with HP Fire. So, in comes Munchlax to scare it out again. Ghastly gonna stuff that normal stab. Is it gonna Will-O-Wisp? Is it gonna another Gligar into Ghastly? It's gonna sub and see what's going on. Gligar is gonna be faster, though. It's naturally faster. I always forget Gligar is 19. It subs down to Orin and d takes it out with Shadow Ball. Okay. Now, Staryu met with Hydro Staryu. We haven't seen that yet. It's been Surf's. But, I mean, look at that damage to Munchlax, 43, that's impressive. So, the Orin is tripped uh, quite early, and now Ghastly's gonna threaten it out with what, Wisp? Boom, Wisp. Another Gligar into Ghastly. I mean, as you, uh, if you've been watching this video, you now have a pretty good idea of what DVP Little Cup is like, you know, just from seeing what tournament game after tournament game. And you see, the options for dealing with Ghastly are not wonderful, or Munchlax. It's a tier that really teaches you how to play around difficult threats. And there's a beautiful... Oh, well, the Thief doesn't really go far because the Gligar is Yachi Berry. I mean, that'll stop an HPI's Bronze Ore. Uh, but uh, it doesn't do much for Ghastly. But it would have been great to steal the uh, Yachi. Or uh, the... Cit uh, not Citrus. Orin. Uh, Orin is better because uh, Citrus goes by percent and the percentages in the Little Cup are lower because everything is so weak. There's a uh, Mist Burned Aqua Tail. But Starmie is still going, or Star U is still going to chase out with Psychic, which is unstabbed, but still hitting quite hard. And there's an HP Grass Star U. What is that for? Ch oh, Chin Chow, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so, Star U's uh, Exchange Blows. And now this one gets Pursuit KO'd by, by Munchlax. Great heads up move. And now Ghastly's going to come in and also going to... Oh, it's going to try to Shadow Ball the Ghastly pivoting into Sludge Bomb on the Switch. But instead, I'm all just staying in. And so that 3v3, that 4v3 was suddenly turned into... I don't know. I think... I mean, I get the idea that you don't want to... It feels like this advantage was just squandered very quickly. Because of losing two Pokemon in two turns to Munchlax. So, you know, two turns before you were ahead, now you're behind. I mean, you just gotta keep battering away at it. I mean, I know Staryu is useful, but it's the pursuit factor is what makes it difficult. And I guess you don't want to switch into Ghastly, but I don't know. Like, if you're going for Sludge Bomb or Will O Wisp or I mean, Explosion, I guess you don't want to you don't want to boom into Ghastly. But yeah, I don't know. It's that felt a little yeah, because it's not like Imanol wants to switch out much either, because Munchlax is gonna be you know at lower health with uh, rocks and hail, and I mean, yeah, Orin, but I don't know, and now Whalmer is not going to be able to get it all done, I mean, look, I'm thrilled to see Whalmer water spouting, but that's not going to be enough at this point, you know, before, yes, sure, and the second water spout goes off, still doing impressive damage, but down it goes, and yeah, now, uh, it's, I, I don't see, well, I mean, okay, look, you can take a hit from Ghastly and then win, uh, beat the other Munchlax through faster superpower, so it's not over, but especially if that will o -Wisp misses, but it doesn't quite KO, so now you need a second miss, and you get the second miss, oh, that's brutal, that's, oh, man, <laughs> that's really, really unfortunate. And it does win the superpower war. That sucks. That's... Yeah, that's really... Uh, well, what an unfortunate finish. Alright, next game. Next game. Bronzor, Voltorb, Taunting. Blocking the rocks. Rain Dance. Alright, so this Voltorb is indeed raining. And Thunder... It was a pretty nasty chunk. So what's coming in? And is it going to be Damp Rock? Omanite. Oh, this is going to... 
Okay, well, Snover, yes, it does replace the uh, hail. It does replace the rain with hail, but that Hydro still does a really impressive chunk. And the Omanite's going to get up rocks, and the Snover's going to weaken itself through Woodhammer. So, beautifully synergistic combination of everything there. I mean, yes, Orenberry, but that just uh, weakens Snover's capacity to do this, to pull this off again later. Stunky coming in. There's another rain dance. Here comes Bronzor to get up rocks. And Chinchow, I mean, whatever Bronzor does, it's not going to threaten uh, Chinchow or a Rain Sweeper, so you may as well get up rocks. So I, I'm fine with that play. And I guess you just sacrifice Chin Snover here? Because it's not going to be able to take it, beat it one on one. God, that hard, those hard hitting Hydros. Ice Shard just for the little bit of chip alongside Hail. So, yeah, Bronzor can still be used later. Orin will go off. So in comes Machop, and is that going to be a Scarf Machop? D-Punch, hey, we know it's threatening. And there's Mantyke. I remember I asked earlier, uh, does people still use Mantyke? And apparently they do, and there's the rain. But now Munchlax is in the picture. Is that going to be enough? Is the goal here to Aftermath Munchlax into KO range? With the, looks like it might be, as Kabuto will now be able to threaten it with Waterfall. And the next round of rocks will not put Munchlax into Orenberry range. So down goes Bronzor. Machop's not an option. What of the last two are going to... Yeah, I, I guess now you're just uh, whittling your own Munchlax down with rocks to get it into Orenberry range. As Kubudo now claims another KO. Uh, was that previous... Uh, was the... I don't... Oh, wait, no, I, uh, we didn't get to see the full duration of the rain because it kept getting cut off by Snover, so we don't know if it was Damp Rock or not. Now, there's a Sucker Punch not quite taking Kabuto out, but with Aftermath, it does. So we see two uses of Aftermath in one battle. It's very cool, especially because we haven't seen it so far. And, yeah, it's not going to be enough for Mantyke to break through the Munchlax, so... High-powered, but, uh, yeah, sometimes you, it's just not enough to hit your target. You, you can't get through all the targets you need to. So, uh, interesting series. Shame about that first game. And now we're down to the last series. ISS, a very well-known uh, Little Cup player in multiple generations, and he's leading off with an Elekid versus another Growlithe. Oh, I love Growlithe. Growlithe into Houndour, flash firing, and Growlithe gets trapped. Oh, it gets crit. Oh, that sucks. So, Growlithe not only does nothing, but actually he uh, powers up the opposing Houndour, so... But, I mean, the, getting fainted like that wasn't its fault, but that's that's terrible. Now, Munchlax is getting burned. Spam Will-O-Wisp, kids. That's the lesson. Houndour, Ghastly, everything that can Will-O-Wisp a Munchlax, you will wind up using it. Uh, so it burns, and but now it gets... Uh, Han Piol gets a crit in return, taking out the Houndour with uh, Munchlax. So, uh, fair's fair-ish. Gligar Swords Dancing again. Taking still a not insignificant chunk from the burned return. Trying to Aqua Tail a Duskull or Ghastly or Gligar on the switch. Not quite doing it. And I don't know. Okay, no, that superpower was a smart move because it prevents Gligar from uh, getting Orenberry activated. And then ISS sees that the intent behind that play beautifully and goes for another Swords Dance so that if. Yeah, even Superpower is going to activate Orin and get it back up to full health. So, beautifully done. Nice, you know, a nice idea, but the second time, you have to return, because at least that way you're just limiting how much uh, Orin it's getting back. But Snover is still going to Revenge Kill if it's Scarf Blizzard, or just... Actually, Ice Shard doesn't quite do it, and it Stone Edges and gets taken out. So, that extra percent... Okay, I don't think it would have done an extra 22. What, what it ended up at 22? After the Ice Shard? Yeah, I don't think the minus 2... Return. I don't think the minus one burned return would have done 22. You know, I mean, maybe, I guess, if the first one, if the burned one did 30, but no, I don't think so. Might have been a roll. I mean, the most that would have happened is Gligar might have gone down to the hail, which, I mean, yes, but, you know, the blind double down would have been difficult to deal with for Han Piel because of the deficit in Pokemon. Now, Taylor going for a quick attack, try to finish it off, Duskull in, Duskull once again doing its thing, and getting plucked. Stealing the Orenberry, which, cool, but actually, it might win this one-on-one -on -one because, oh no, there's no more Orenberries to steal, never mind. But I can at least go down with, um, with, yeah, it'll take Duskull down with it, but I mean, this is fine because at this point, Isis is just trading down, 
and he's very much had an advantage with the 4-2. Elekid, I mean, lead Elekid is already terrifying against six Pokemon, and you bring a fully healthy lead Elekid in against the last two, it's going to be rough. Psychic makes sure Krogung goes down in one, and uh, reveals that it's life form, so it's hitting really hard, and it drops Ghastly as well. That's game one. ISS leads, and Apom again, Staryu again. Bronzor coming in on the fake out, getting up those rocks if the Apom doesn't taunt. And no, it just U-turns for Chip. And in comes Munchlax into Bronzor. Can we make sure the music is still? There we go. So Ice is not even bothering with uh, with rocks yet. Just going right for those uh, Psychics to start bludgeoning the... I guess the first one was uh, on an attempted taunt. But with Munchlax, it's just, look, I, wanna, I want to... Uh, trip that Munchlax's Orenberry as soon as possible, and that's what happens. Unfortunate Fire Punch burn, though, meaning taking the second one won't happen, but a crit in return. Okay, so Munchlax is fairly down for the count, since it has such low health, and it does indeed go down to the surf. No rocks? I wonder if that Bronzor even had rocks, or if the rocks are somewhere else. You know, Well, I guess those are the same thing, but you know what I mean. So Diglett comes in on the fake out, and it's going to get the trap off. And it reverses, uh, wow, unique use of Diglett there, as Shiny Apom gets punished, and down it goes. In comes another Stab Fake Out user in Meowth. Let's look at that sprite for a second. No, I love the Heart Gold and Soul Silver sprites. I love all the Gen 4 sprites. Anyway, so Munchlax, uh, oh, sorry, I skipped ahead by accident. So, Munchlax on the Fake Out, Munchlax being sacrificed here. Interesting choice to sacrifice the Munchlax, again, you know, especially when you're ahead. You know, now it's even, but after you revenge uh, the uh, Meowth, you'll be ahead again. So interesting choice to let Munchlax go down instead of, I don't know, Staryu. Uh, because the last... I mean, I'm sure uh, there's a reason for that. But from the the outside perspective, it looks like, well, Munchlax beats you know, so many things one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, why wouldn't you want to preserve it? Especially at the advantage. You know, that same logic that went into the whole lead Elekid is really good. Uh, against six Pokemon, you know, let alone two, so same idea with Munchlax, you know, when you're at such an advantage. But, you know, now it's going to be 4-3, and in comes Teddy Ursa, oh my god, I love Teddy Ursa, I'm going to be so sad uh, if Teddy Ursa gets KO'd, it's one of my favorite Pokemon, very, very favorite. Look at that sprite, I can't, I can't look at the front sprite, because I know it's going to get KO'd, I just know it. Uh, so, I mean, the back sprite is adorable too, but anyway, so Diglett is uh, going to... It's going to protect on on Stealth Rock. Ugh, that's brutal. Uh, Ice is really taking uh, the time. The timer went down to 15 seconds on that turn. But yeah, so I, it's a quick feat. It's not going to be Guts like Ursaring. Um, I mean, Ursaring could be quick feat, but Ursaring is more known for Guts. But with Teddy Ursa, it doesn't have Guts. It's just quick feet. So you have uh, speedy boosted facades. You know, like a harder hitting Talo. And uh, you have a... Nice crunch for Duskull, but it's not going to quite be enough, especially with Auron intact. Now that Return is doing a million in Return, but, you know, as opposed to most Auron Pokemon, Teddy Ursa is losing health. So, unfortunately, it goes down, but it valiantly will take Duskull with it. So, uh, KO and a half, let's call it, for uh, for Teddy Ursa. Yeah, no, no, let's call it two. It, it KO'd Diglett, you know. So, in comes Doduo as... Yeah, I guess I should have been suspicious when... Uh, Teddy Ursa came in, but now this Doduo last does indeed confirm it is mono normal. And it's going to be outsped and KO'd by the Starmie because it is not Scarf. Uh, and Quick Attack will put it in range, but this is a speed tie at best for Taylor, which is going to protect to activate the orb. So it's got to win the speed tie and then. And it doesn't. You know, and then beat the last. So. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I really enjoyed so much of these series. And I cannot... Right now, at the point of this video, I think round three is going on. It's ongoing. So I'll be doing round two next. Hopefully it won't take me forever like with the Ubers tournament. Uh, but yeah. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one.